Do you have an infrared filter, but you don't know what kind of infrared filter it is? Maybe you purchased a used converted camera with an unknown internal filter. This hack will help you figure out what kind of infrared filter you have. In order to test our infrared filter, we're going to need a calibration image. So for this, I'm using an image that I created in Photoshop. This is simply a plain image using a gradient fill that allowed me to create a rainbow of colors of the visible light spectrum so that I can test my filters. You can create one of these yourself in Photoshop, or you can download this from my website. There'll be a link in the description. So let me take some shots and then we will take a look at the results. So this is the calibration image that we're looking at. I basically pointed my camera with a, an infrared filter at the screen and took this photo. So we'll use this to compare what the different types of infrared filter look like. We're focusing on the visible light portion of the spectrum. We can't see infrared or even ultraviolet. My monitor won't display that, but we'll still be able to make some inferences about what type of filter we have just looking at the visible light spectrum. This particular shot was taken with a full spectrum camera. You would see the full range of colors if you shot this calibration image with a full spectrum camera or even with a regular visible light camera with a hot mirror filter, but because of course that camera would allow you to see all of the colors of the spectrum. All right, so we have our first calibration image here with a specific infrared filter. I'm going to talk about this for a minute. I'll give you a, a moment to guess at what it is, but let's talk about some of the characteristics of this image. So the first thing that I want to point out is over here on the left side of this image, we're seeing a lot of red and I'm going to dismiss that everything to the left of this black bar. I'm going to dismiss that. And the reason why is because when Photoshop or any other program that think uses an RGB value of colors, thinks of a color that are circular. The hue is 360 degrees of color. And as a result of that, there's actually a little bit of magenta that's going to bleed into the red side. And there's a little bit of red that's going to bleed into the magenta side. And so that's the nature of the way that we treat visible light colors. And so what we're seeing here on the left side of this image is actually some of the red light that is appearing in the magenta. Um, and so it's not, it does, this doesn't mean that we're seeing magenta light coming through. It means, it, it actually means that the red light from the far right side of the image is being passed. So just be aware of that limitation because of the nature, the circular nature of color here. But what can we see here? So we can clearly see if we compare these two images that the blue light is being filtered out entirely. The cyan light is being filtered out entirely. And of course the magenta light is being filtered out entirely. We're just seeing the red portion of magenta, but what's being passed by this filter is green light. So all of the green light is being passed. And in fact, if you look at, if you compare the width of these, you can see over here on the left, the width goes from about, you know, two of these dots here, but you can see it's much wider on this side. All of these colors kind of blend into each other. You're not gonna see a hard line where, where green ends and cyan begins, for example. We're seeing green, we're seeing yellow, orange, and red. And so what this says to me is that we're looking at a 550 nanometer filter, which allows green light and, and to the right to pass. So green, yellow, orange, and red. This is a 550 nanometer filter. It's going to allow those to pass and it's going to block cyan, blue, violet, magenta. Let's move on to the next image. So this particular filter is actually a 590 nanometer filter. So we're starting to see the red get washed out and we're seeing this, some of this additional color. And if we compare these two images, you can see that the, the color that's being highly exposed through this filter is up to about this point on the visible light side. So that is some yellow, orange, and red. And in fact, it might even be closer to maybe this dot. So that's really just orange and red. That tells me that this is a 590 nanometer filter, which only passes orange light and red light. It's gonna block everything lower. So it's going to block yellow, green, cyan, blue, indigo, violet. So we're gonna we're going see all of those colors blocked 
uh, from uh, the left side of the image and we're only going to pass orange and red. So if you do this test and you see an image similar to this, then this is going to be a 590 nanometer filter. Next up, we're starting to lose even more visible light color. You can see on the left side of the image, we're starting to just pick up reflections from my window off to the side here. But on the right side of the image, this is becoming a very monochrome type of an image, but we're still seeing light coming through here, but we're only seeing one color of light. And so when you're only seeing one color of visible light coming through, then that's an, an indication that we have a 720 nanometer filter because we're just getting red. So that could also mean maybe a 695, somewhere between a 695 and a 720. This particular image is a 720, only allowing that one color of visible light, red, to come through. And then if I white balance on that, then it looks white and you can kind of see the rest of the image lacks color. This one is pretty interesting. This is a 830 nanometer image. And as you can see, there's nothing at all being shown on the monitor. And that's because the monitor is emitting no infrared light and the camera is only picking up infrared light. And so there's nothing to be captured. And the only thing that we're actually seeing here besides like the edge of the monitor is again, this reflection of the window where there's some errant infrared light being reflected in from outdoors. But the screen itself is not actually sharing any light, any visible light, even though I shot this calibration image on the, on the left, that you have an infrared filter that is blocking all visible light. So that could be something higher than about 750 nanometers. In all likelihood, that's going to be an 830 nanometer filter, an 850, maybe a 900 or a 950 or a thousand, but definitely something higher than 750 nanometers. You will not see any of this calibration image at all. All right, let's take a look at one more image because I find this one to be pretty fascinating. I'm going to describe this image and I'll give you a moment to think about what filter you think this might be. So if we look at this image, you can very clearly see that we are getting blues on the left, but we're not getting those indigos and violets off to the far uh, left side of the image, just getting blues. So there's clearly some kind of a, of a block happening uh, somewhere in the 400 nanometer range that's, that's allowing some blue light to pass, but blocking some of the lower end of the visible light spectrum. And then of course we have the, the cyans in the middle, and then we're picking up greens, but then nothing beyond greens. So Clearly this filter ranges from somewhere in the, in the four hundreds to the low five hundreds, because, you know, remember that orange filter, what that the 550 would, would allow greens to pass. So we're getting some greens here. So maybe this is cutting off at about 550, um, allowing some of those greens in, but then it's blocking the yellows, the oranges and the reds. What kind of filter could do this now? This is a little bit of a trick question because you can't see the infrared part of this, but this is actually an IR chrome filter. And this gives you a little bit of hint of how that filter works. While we can't see the infrared portion of what that filter is capturing, I'm assuming that it's capturing plenty of light beyond 750. What we're seeing here is what it's doing in the visible light portion of the spectrum to combine with that infrared light to create its interesting effects. It's passing blue light, so we get the blue sky without a color swap. And you might say, well, Rob, when I shoot with the IR chrome filter, I'm not getting green foliage, I'm getting orange, red, these vibrant colors. Well, yes, because the the foliage is reflecting green light and infrared light. It's, it's, a, it's combining those two, and that's what's creating those interesting colors. And so I just thought this was a fascinating comparison. Most of those other filters block visible light on the, the lower side, the left side of this spectrum, and allow colors to the right, to the red side to pass. But the IR chrome filter is a little bit different because it's capturing a, a sliver of light in the blues, cyans, and greens, blocking something in the middle, and then allowing infrared to pass, a dual bandpass filter. Do you have any other tricks for testing your infrared filters? Let us know what they are in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, check out my book, Color Doesn't Exist, a practical guide to infrared photography. 
It's full of details for photographers at all skill levels. Now available in print and ebook editions. Check it out at infraredbook.com. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, or comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.